Hey everyone, this is George Kroos, and this is, I don't want to even say it's a special podcast. I don't know if it's a special podcast, um, but I, I try to use these spaces to not only share learning and education, but, you know, things that I'm going through. And I've always seen this as a, a diary to my kids, that one day my kids will look back and they can learn stuff from their dad about their life in while hopefully sharing some lessons with you all so i'm going to give you a heads up um my 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 dog odom uh to um say goodbye to him this week and i was there with him right to the end and um had a humane way of passing and um had to say goodbye so if you um do have a dog or you've lost a dog you know could be something that you struggle listening to but i didn't want to just share about his last moments but kind of how much he meant to me and how I got him and how, how big of a deal it was. And hopefully that someone may be going through depression, some grief, cause I'm, I'm really struggling and I'm having a hard time talking about this. Um, but it is important for me to, um, to take that time to share and to connect. So there's not going to be any horns or anything like that, or, um, I mean, it's probably gonna be bawling half the time if not the entire time because I'm, I'm struggling I'm having a really hard time and uh, I think it's really easy to share the upbeat like I'm a pretty positive person and not that um, that's all I am I know I, I've, I have depression I have anxiety is probably one of the reasons I want to share about Odom is because of that how much he's helped me with that stuff and uh, but I also wanted I want people to see real and it's important to me to do this. So, you know, if, if, you, if you don't listen to this, that's fine. Um, this, is, this isn't for you as much as it is maybe it is for me and uh, for my kids to hear one day. And, uh, you know, th- so it is Tuesday, February 20th. On Sunday, February 18th, I had to say goodbye. And I've, like, been a zombie ever since. I'm really struggling. I'm doing some things um, that I've committed to doing. And I feel a little bit lifeless through this. And I'm, I'm really struggling uh, more than my kids, more than my other dog, Cooper, who are just kind of going through stuff. And there's a, there's a little part of me that struggles um, when you're going through something like this and um, you have a dog that's so close to your family and you're like, oh, good, my kids aren't doing as bad as I, I am. And then you're like, why aren't they doing as bad as I am? And there's a little bit of that, but they're, they're all good. They're dealing with it really, really well. And I think their biggest struggle is watching a dad. I'm having our time and it's, it's hard for me because I, I, you know, I, I'm very protective of my kids. I, I love my kids. Um, and I also, sometimes I want to be tougher than I am in the moment, but I want to share, but, uh, Odin was really special to me and he came into my life and that's, you can maybe hear my other dog barking. Uh, he came into my life, uh, when I needed him and, Years ago, I actually had a dog, Kobe, and when I uh, was a kid, I always wanted a dog. It's like I asked my parents literally every Christmas for a dog, and they said to me, uh, and like, we don't do the dogs are not going to be part of our family, and I swore I would get a dog the day I became an adult. Now, I don't know what that meant, but to me, the first day of teaching, I actually... Um, I signed my contract, went to um, the SBCA in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, Canada, and I went and got Kobe. And I, I love that dog, and I did love that dog. And you know, and maybe that's partly why I'm talking about this is because I I didn't know how I'd get over that. And it's not that you don't ever get over losing people, losing dogs. It just changes you, and you become a little bit different. And you maybe become numb to it. I don't know, but. I had him and then uh, he struggled. So I had to get another dog. So I got Shaq. So I had Kobe and Shaq. And then uh, when I was a principal, I remember taking Kobe to the hospital one day because I noticed he was trying to get sick. And, it, and you know, it's my first dog. And I remember them saying like, hey, it's probably time for him to go. So I actually remember tweeting, like taking Kobe to the vet and, and then not realizing that that was going to be like kind of my last trip with him. And I, and I remember taking him um, to the vet realizing I was going to put him down I said can I just have like a little bit of time with him before and I'll bring him back so then I remember I took him to McDonald's and uh, we got a McFlurry and a cheeseburger and he just chowed down and 
this is like a good little memory and, I, and um it's something i'm struggling with right now because I, I don't feel like i had that good memory with odom on the last day i'll talk about more in a second but um yeah so that was losing kobe is like my first brush with death and uh never really lost anyone close to me and especially not someone i was responsible for and so i remember kind of like i was a principal at the time i was walking around like a zombie i was really really struggling and people could tell and then i remember getting a message on twitter and someone said to me you know george i know you're struggling with the loss of your dog and i w- want you to understand this that you can never replace your dog but there are so many dogs that need a really great home and there is a dog out there that that needs you and it was like i i kind of needed to hear that so i wasn't like set on getting a dog but i was like ah, you know i'll go to sbca in edmonton the edmonton humane society i remember going there and it was just so such a beautiful place the way that they they have like full rooms for dogs and they're just and i i went with my brother alec who was down that weekend because i don't think i could have gone on my own to be honest with you and i went there and i went and just hung with some dogs and whatever and then I actually uh, remember I went into Oldham's room and I saw him and I was like, boom, just click right away. And I wasn't ready. I was not ready to have a dog, but oh my God, that dog immediately. Like it was just, there's something happened in that moment. He was just so tall and lanky and it looked like he was going to like fall over and he's so adorable. He's so cute. Just had such a good energy. And I like snuggle with him and I remember my brother like posted a picture. I can't remember. I can't find it. I look for it so hard. And he's like, I think G Kroos is falling in love right now. And he was right. And and then I kind of just decided like, I love this dog. It's so fun. I'm just not ready. I'm just not ready. So I left the Edmonton Humane Society. And then as I was leaving, like, cause I think it was pretty close to closing. It closed. And I was like, Oh no, what have I done? I needed to get that dog. And so it, like basically the second I couldn't realize that, I had made a mistake. I was like, oh, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? Someone's going to get this dog in the morning first thing. So I couldn't sleep. And I like told my brother, I'm getting that dog tomorrow. Like that is happening. So I went like it was a rock concert. Uh, like took it through a rock concert back in the day or like, you know, the I- iPhone 4 release. And I went to the Edmonton Humane Society and waited in a non-existent line <laughs> for Odom. I was like, I- there's no one going to beat me there that day. So I was there early, waited outside. And they saw me waiting outside and the doors open and I ran to the room and it's not even a kennel. It's like, like a legit room. And I went and he wasn't there and I was like, Oh no, 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 no. And, and then I saw they had like an entrance so the dogs could go outside. And then he comes trotting from that little dog door. And I was like, yes, I was so happy. And I said, "Ah, he's coming home with me. So they had to, I I had another dog at the time, uh, Shaq and, um, I took Shaq home or I had to meet, I had to take Odom and meet Shaq. And I me- remember Shaq snapped at Odom right away. And I just looked at the person. I was like, Oh no. And they're like, no, no, it's all good. They, she's just setting her boundaries. And you know, they got along and Shaq was kind of a, a grumpy dog and Odom just brought life to Shaq as well. And Odom was like, even though he was probably about between like six to like six months to a year old, he was a big dog. And, and I like made him a snuggler. (laughs) We're snuggling me and this dog. So that night, you know, played with him and he slept in my bed, slept right beside me, snuggled right against me. And there was not a day that I had that dog that he didn't sleep in my room. And most of the time in my bed, as he got older, he couldn't sleep in my bed anymore, but you know, at least for part of the night, he'd always sleep beside me. And, um, that really, really mattered to me. And I, I, like, I, I felt a total change in my demeanor, who I was because I like, I felt like I really had to take care of him and I don't know what it was. Just something had happened that I I took care of him. And so, uh, just loved him. Would take him to, the, the like a, a ice hockey rink in Canada during the summer because there was no ice and it was like it was like my own dog park and we would just run and just just made me so happy I was so proud of that dog I'm still so proud of that dog 
And he actually, um, I remember, and this is a really important part of the story. I had basically um, like a, a breakdown, like a mental breakdown. And I was probably out of, like I was encouraged to take some time off and not in like a negative way, but like you need to, if you don't take this time off, like you might not last the year. And I remember my principal who became my superintendent, she was just so amazing about it, but I was really, really struggling. And so I was home and it was just me and Odom and Shaq and Odom, that dog stuck by my side and he was there and he slept in the bed. He knew I was having a rough time, but he also got me up when I needed to get up. And, and I say this in a way to understand that he ensured that I would go the next day. Like, that's why this is so hard is because I feel like he's always just kind of like, no matter what I'm going through, because I went through some crap, um, he made me get up and he was there. Um, when my dad died, I remember taking him home and he was there and he made me get up every day. Like he just did. And it wasn't like, I have to get up to take care of this dog. He just did. There was just something about him that made me, um, want to get up every day because I just love that dog so much. And so, um, he's like, you know, he was just such, such a good dog. And, you know, um, I, I currently live in Florida and, uh, this dog is this dog, like everything, like so many decisions I made were based around him. Like moving to a new house. What's the yard situation? What's the fence situation? Right going to a new place what's the dog situation like everything and i have no issue with that i have no issue and people might think that's weird to do that for a dog but if you have something that saves your life you make sure you take care of it and um i think it was in 2021 he was off there were some issues with him and then um took him to the vet realized he had diabetes and he was needing insulin and so uh i will tell you that me and needles don't mix like i get sick of it and but i the thing with insulin and dogs you have to give them a needle and well at least i did throw them twice a day and i didn't did not flinch i would do anything and so i give him that he got better and that was like something that really really mattered to me but he was still having some health concerns you could tell he's like getting older he was um he was really stiff, joint issues, things like that, even though you give him glutamine, all the stuff. And um, we had decided to move to Florida. And I just prayed that he would be alive to make it there. And that, I was so concerned because he was just didn't seem good. And, and he was there. And so... Not only did I pray you'd get there, but I was very nervous and I refused to put him on a plane to get him to Florida because there's no way I'm putting him in the under cargo or something, especially not at his age, but I'm not doing that. So instead of flying to Florida, I decided to drive and uh, I drove to Florida. Uh, one, the first day I drove to Saskatoon from Edmonton and then I picked up my brother and he came with me. And I was dreading this trip because typically what I had done is I had always like open the door, let my dogs out. They'd run in the yard, do their business, that kind of thing. So they weren't used to like doing their business on a walk. So I, I thought it was going to be really, really tough. And I was dreading it for months, for months. I was dreading this. I was dreading him not making it and then dreading something would happen on the trip and dreading like, what, were, what am I going to do if they can't figure this out? And I would drive, take the dogs out. They started figuring out to go to the bathroom. Cooper took a little bit longer than Odom. And so I would get to a hotel, call ahead. I made sure they're all dog friendly. Put me on the first level so I'm close to the door in case it's just so there's no accidents, things like that. And it was the best thing ever. It was such a good thing for me. And it taught me a really important lesson that sometimes the things you dread the most are actually the best thing you can do. Because every morning we're going through this long trip driving, you know, between 10 to 16 hours a day. 
um, you know, for about five days straight. And the dogs could not wait for that morning walk. They couldn't wait for the kind of stop the car walk. And they couldn't wait for the end of the night walk. And I hadn't been doing that. And so finally get to Florida. And I, I was like, well, this is what we're doing now. Like, they are so excited about this. Why would I not do something that I see that they love tremendously. And it is easier in Florida than in Canada because we're talking minus 40 days. And, you know, even when I'd let them out, they're like, no, nah, I'm not going out there. <laughs> so um, so that became part of my routine is I would walk them every morning. And I'm not home all the time, but if I was home, I walked them every morning and I walked them every night. And it was like the greatest thing for all of us to do that. And miraculously, um. Well, actually, before this, Odom started kind of looking like he was drunk. He, he'd like fall over. And I was like, oh, no, like the environment is not good for him. So, again, took him to the vet. And what they realized was he was getting over medicated because of the the climate was so different in Florida. So his his diabetes from moving to Florida had actually got better. And not only did he get better, um, he... Like, not only did his diabetes get better and we had to lower his insulin, his joints got better. And he started looking like a puppy. And one of the things that vet told me is probably gave him an extra, like, year of life because of the move. Which, I will tell you, I did everything for that dog, whether it was the food I bought, things that I did to ensure that dog would have as long a life as possible. And not just for, and not, and a comfortable life. Not just... For me selfishly, which it totally is, but I just want to have a really, really good life. And that routine became my routine. And I'll I'll talk more. Uh, maybe I'll talk about it now. The the thing I'm struggling with right now, which I'm really having a very hard time with, is that my day was centered around giving that dog medicine when he would eat, because you had to keep some consistency. And anybody listening to this, if you've never had a dog, you might not understand this. And if you have something that saves your life, you make sacrifices. And I remember when I was at the Edmonton Humane Society, they like do a check on you to make sure you're suitable. And they like, are you a good home for this dog? Like, will you do everything you can to make the best life? And I actually got a message on almost passing from that society. And they said, thank you for providing this dog such a good home. Because I tagged them on it. And to think that, like, I kept my word to them. That mattered to me. Um, so he got really, really better. And then, um, December around like Christmas break, I remember he's sitting on the couch with me and that dog sat on my lap all the time. He has like the biggest head and it would just, you could feel the weight on, on your leg. And as an aside, the thing that I love about that dog so much, whoever came to the house was the most popular person ever. And he would snuggle them right away. If they sat down, he sat like he would make sure he'd get some weight on them. And they do that. And he made people who hated dogs love dogs. He was so good about it. Um, if you like, oh, this is my favorite breed. No, Odin was your favorite breed now. He was just the best. And one of the things I say that I, I, I honestly try to do is that I try to be the best part of any person's day that I meet in a day. And that includes strangers. And I, I was thinking about this as a recording this podcast. I got that from Odom. I didn't realize that because Odom was like always the best part of every person's day that entered the house. And he just made you love him. And it was just kind of amazing to see. And one of the things that I really appreciate in his passing is people have reached out to me that I haven't heard from in a long time and actually feel like I maybe disconnected from and them reaching out to me mattered. It really mattered. And it's like, I'll never forget it. I'll never forget um, people that went out of their way to check in on me that I was actually shocked that did. And it mattered to me quite a bit. But uh, in December, as I said, in Christmas break, he's sitting with me on the couch with that big giant head. And I remember just kind of petting him, which I always do. And then I noticed like a little lump. And it's like, that's weird. That's, that's, that's new. And then we took him to the vet and I kind of knew that it was going to be cancer and then it was cancer. And then the little bump turned into a gigantic bump right away. And they said he's, 
there's not much time left. And the the thing that um, I remember I was about to run a marathon. I had been prepping so long for it. And I thought about not doing it. I was really upset. I'm still upset, obviously. And uh, I thought I committed to it. And actually, if I don't do it, I know that it's probably not going to happen for a while. And I need this dog to see me run a marathon. I know it's a weird thing to say, but he's been with me through so much, like so many like big points in my life that I thought about um, just, I don't know, like he would know. You just, whatever that's, I'm making it up in my head, maybe, I don't care. I'm just it mattered. So um, I remember I had to get up and we had a routine and it, I threw off the routine because the marathon started at 5 a.m. and typically I'd wake up at 6 and take him for a walk. And I remember I was up at like at 2.30 and he's dealing with this cancer and he's struggling. And I remember he ran to the door at 2.30 as I'm leaving and he's like, are we not going for a walk? Like what is going on here? And I remember that very distinctly that I was like, this dude, this dude is like ready to go. It's, it just doesn't make any sense to me. And it was his way of saying like, Hey, I got something left in me. And if, if I can do it, you can do it. And I thought about that all the entire marathon and I, I'm not going to say the marathon was easy because I'm like I have um, pulled hamstring I've been struggling with a broken foot but any time that I was like st- you know thinking about stopping or pulling out or doing any of that stuff I distinctly remember thinking about getting a medal around Odom's neck at the end of the race and just wanting to have that moment and how he was in the morning. I could just see his tail wagging, ready to go and thinking, we got more walks, buddy. We got more walks. And I got home after the marathon. And the first thing I did was put that metal around his neck. Cause I just wanted to have a picture of that. Cause, cause like I, I wouldn't have done it if it wasn't for him doing that. And so, um, over the last month or so, trying to figure out different things to do and I'm struggling because I feel like you I did everything for that dog and to give him the happiest life possible and then you question like everything you do or didn't do and did it lead to him passing away and so I have a lot of guilt right now I have a lot of guilt um, because I think some of the meds hurt him and if they would, if I had any inkling, they would hurt him. I would would have never taken them. But I left here on Thursday for an event, and I took him for a walk, and he was he was struggling. And then I came home on Sunday night, and it was time for him to go. He could not move. He went from walking to he couldn't move. And so I knew, and I remember saying to him over and over again, "You'll tell me when you're ready, right, buddy." And I took him to the vet and I knew it was time. And I don't, I've, I've had to like be with dogs before as they, as we, you know, end their life. And, but it's Florida. So it's a little bit different than how I was in Canada. And I remember having him on my lap and they said, Hey, we have to, um, take him to the back and put the catheter in and you can't be back there because that's just not the protocol. I said, I said, well, I, there's no way I'm being away from this dog. And I said, well, that's not what we do. And I said, if you have to take this dog away from me for three seconds, it's not happening. I will be with this dog every single moment. And so they hummed and hawed and basically they broke their protocol and they came in at his head and and then I uh, I felt the doctor came in gave him the anesthesia to 
have him sleep and I can hear him snoring. And, and then I felt, you know, as they did the whatever injection, I just felt his heart stop and that was it. And I stayed in that room for a while and uh, said goodbye to my buddy because I promised I would take care of him right to the end. And you just wish you had more time. Um, you just wish you had more time. And the amount of guilt I have right now is horrible. And I'm, I know someone's going to like, don't feel guilty in the comments. I don't, I don't need you to say that. Just let me deal with it. You know, I, I, I'm struggling with the idea that I did everything I could, but it also is it not enough. But I also know I did everything that gave that dog the best life possible because, boy, that dog gave me a great life. And there's a movie called um, My Dog Skip. And it's actually Frankie Muniz, uh, Malcolm in the Middle kid. And he has a dog as a child. And the dog is like a, is a, I think it's a Beagle or Jack Russell Terrier, but it looked like a mini version of Odom. And I always thought of it. But um, the boy is a only child and he has the dog and then he goes off to college. And he says something, and it's not going to make any sense, but maybe it will. He says about the dog, I was an only child, and he was an only dog. And that's not my situation at all. Like, I'm not an only child. I'm the youngest of four. Uh, I actually have another dog. But I'll tell you, it was just me and Odom. Like, I, it, when you, you feel like he was my guy, and um, he just made me feel like the most special guy in the world. And I'll tell you, if you came to my house, I don't care what my house looked like. I don't care what anything. I would say to you, hey, you got to meet Odom. That's the best dog in the world. Because he's just such a good dog. And he just brought joy to everybody. And so uh, to my kids watching this, you have no idea how much that dog loved you. And the things you you the way you stuck your fingers in his mouth and his eyes and wherever. And he just loved you and he'd look after you and he'd put his head ar around you to make sure you're safe. And that dog just gave me life. And, uh, I just wanted to share that story because, uh, maybe for me just to talk it out, but you know, we we have these things that we just think are, you know, all the good stuff in our life. But the the good stuff often comes with a lot of grief when we lose the good stuff. And I'm going to have a lot of grief, and I know dogs can't live as long as we do. But uh, that dog is going to live in me forever because he made my life better. And I'm so grateful I had him. So I'm so grateful that my family had him, and but he was my dog. And I'll miss him forever. I just want to share it with y'all. Uh, thank you so much for listening. And uh, just if you could do me any favor, just the dogs in your life, the family in your life, don't don't waste time. Just take care of them. Just give them a little extra because that's what Odom did for me. And it made me better. And it taught me to be better to other people. So thanks for listening. Take care. <laughs>